Welcome to the gothic city of Ghent and the beginning of our coverage of the 35th World Gymnastics Championships from Belgium. I'm Scott Russell. This is one of the classic canals which becomes a thoroughfare of the city, lined by ancient buildings. There are age-old stories here, and it's appropriate because we're talking about a sport that features the unmistakable appeal of youth. Now, gymnastics has achieved a certain maturity at these World Championships, become tested by time. I'm sure we'll find out that what happens at the Flanders Sports Arena, not far from here is all about three things about experience about history and craftsmanship those three things in the sport of gymnastics can make all the difference in the world Canadian men hope to return to international respectability. A team absent from the last Olympics, they begin the road to recovery. Sasha Jelkoff leads the way, trying to make experience count. Strength and character belong to Belarus, a team led by two-time world champion Ivana Vankov. The American men have never won team gold. Sean Towson says, never say never. The Canadian women were top ten in Sydney. So many changes, four of six at their first world. BC's Kate Richardson, the bright light. Canada's top Olympian is back to stem the tide. Romanians are favored. Andrea Radican aims to lead the champs to their fifth straight title. And Russia's hope swings on Svetlana Horkina's star. Today on CBC Sports Saturday, the World Gymnastics Championships from Ghent, Belgium. Inside the Flanders Sports Arena now and joined by two-time Canadian Olympian Laurie Strong Ballard. First up, events which the gymnasts attach a great deal of importance to. They are the team finals. And one thing to keep in mind, Laurie, as we begin with the men, that's that the Chinese, who are the Olympic champions and the defending world champions, have sent a B team here. And that means that there might be a lot more room for everybody else. And Scott, with a weaker Chinese team, you'd expect the Russians to fill the gap. But unfortunately, they lost their top all-arounder just days before the preliminary competition and in fact only qualified to this final in that last eight spot with the new rules eight teams advance to the final three gymnasts compete and three scores count now belarus made a bold statement in the preliminaries their two-time world champion ivana vonkov is finally healthy and could take this belarusian team to the top the americans showed up without their superstar blaine wilson but have restocked their team with incredible talent and surprised everyone in the preliminaries korea looks strong and romania is an up-and-coming men's team. So with the new competition format and the new judging rules, this competition could be wide open. There is a Canadian story to tell, and it's one with many layers. One of those layers, and no question, is the fact that the Canadians did not qualify a team to the last Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia. So they're out here to make impressions as they build three years down the road to the next Olympics in Athens, Greece. And this could be a big start for them. They have a new national head coach who has implemented a very strenuous training program in Canada. They've already seen great results, placing 11th at the FISU Games earlier this year. And this is a young team that can easily be molded, but with a nice touch of leadership from Alexander Jelkov and a veteran in Richard Aikida. So this is a big test for them on their road to trying to qualify to the Olympics in 2004. No illusions here. The Canadians did not qualify a team to the final eight. They did compete well on the first day of competition. There are six gymnasts on the Canadian side. Five compete each apparatus. Four scores to count, and we'll begin our coverage here in Ghent by telling the story of the Canadian men. Being led in by Alexander Jelkov to the team qualifications. Uh, there is Grant Golding of Abbotsford, BC, Richard Aikida, along with his brother. And the Canadians started off on a difficult event, the Pommel Horse. Here is 20 year old Grant Golding. Now, Grant Golding is a very stable all around performer, but you're right, the Pommel Horse can be a tough event to start on, unless, of course, you're a specialist here. He's doing a good job showing single pommel work that is so difficult. Grant was third all around at the Canadian Championships in St. John, New Brunswick. More single pommel work here, and he really lets it go, traveling across the horse. Very aggressive. He knows he's almost home here, just a dismount. And a nice job. It is a good start for the Canadian men and for Grant Golding. Take a look at the last part of the routine. He is so aggressive. He's almost clipped his leg right there, but because he's aggressive and really going for it, he pulls out a nice routine and a good score. Grant 
Brings a little experience, 8.887. He also competed for Canada at the World Championships in Tianjin, China uh, last year. So the Canadian men now move on to the second event, and they will follow in Olympic order. They go next to the rings. Here is David Kikuchi, 21 years old, from Fall River, Nova Scotia. Obviously, upper body strength is so important on this event. And when David combines strength elements like this in a row, he's gaining valuable bonus points. They're looking for 1.2 in bonus. Showing nice control of the rings. Pressing up to handstand. He has to show a swing, back up to handstand. A little bit of movement in the ring. Just a dismount, double out, and he punctuates it with a fabulous landing. Yes, he nails the dismount. David Kikuchi won this event at the national championships. Looking for no deductions right here. No movement on the landing. It was a great routine. And a great score, 9-4-2-5 for David Kikuchi of Canada on the rings. Another strength event and a difficult event. Let's go to the vault now where Canada is next. And here's 21-year-old Scott Lang of Calgary. Scott's performing a Yurchenko-style vault. Notice the round off onto the board. Double twist, a big hop on the landing. He has so much power. Notice, Scott, the new vault. That is a vaulting table, and Scott says that he likes that new table. It gives him tremendous power, almost too much. He could probably make that two and a half. 9287 as Canada continues to score surprisingly well here in Ghent in preliminary competition. Here is the veteran, 26-year-old Richard Aikida from Abbotsford, British Columbia, the 2001 all-around champion in Canada, his seventh world championships. This Canadian team is very well prepared. They've put a lot of time and dedication into the preparation for world championships. Some of the athletes have been on the road for six weeks now. He's a nice combination right here. The tippet nice. to a forward roll. He pulls it out. A little bit of muscling right there. But that is a difficult E-level skill. Just the dismount, double pike, a tiny hop on the landing. Let's take a look at that interesting combination there, the basket. To the tippet, watch, he counter-rotates to a forward roll, landing on his shoulders, and yes, that does hurt. He was 12th at the 1996 Correct. World Championships on this event in Puerto Rico, 9-0-6-2, again, a difficult event. Alexander Jeltkov won the silver medal on this event, the high bar, at the last World Championships in Tianjin, China. Can he hit this one? He's a tall gymnast, and that makes him even more impressive on this event, and more difficulty since the last World Championship and the Olympic Games. Here comes one of his big elements, a Pike Kovacs. Very nice. He has another one coming up right here. Oh! It's like a ginger over the high bar. He didn't square it up. Caught on one hand, the other hand slipped from the bar. That's a five-tenth deduction, plus he will not get credit for the difficulty of that element. But it is evident, Lori, that he has indeed added a great deal more difficulty since his disappointing finish at the Olympic Games in the high bar, where he did not make the final. Nice, clean dismount. That's a big break. A big break for him for Canada, but he did come back strong, showing this nice, high, clean dismount, a pretty good landing. Born in Soviet Georgia, now lives in Montreal, salvages an 8-9-2-5 on the high bar for Canada, Alexander Jelkov. And so the Canadians move on to their sixth and final event here at the World Championships, and once again, Alexander Jelkov strong in the Florex. Has to be tough to come back after missing his high bars. He had so many hopes to make it to a final and possibly win another medal there. But he knows he has to compete for the team here. This is a team competition. He's doing a fabulous job. Look at his toe point, and his legs are beautiful. He almost has a similar finesse to Olympic champion Alexei Neymov on this event. 
first five, Canadians have scored extremely well, coming back after not qualifying for the last Olympic Games. The top 12 countries will get to the next Olympics. Canada's trying to solidify themselves as a contender to be one of those top 12 teams for the next Olympic Games, and Jelkov does a tremendous job right here. He is so clean on the floor exercise. Put together a big score for Canada. There's the score, 9-4-1-2 for Alexander Jelkov of Canada, and that is symbolic of a great Canadian performance here. They wind up 12th after team qualifying, a good result bet since the World Championships in Montreal, 1985. Been a long road back to team respectability for Richard Aikida. Um, I think we did, uh, like, staying together. You know, like, one guy missed, the next guy was in there and fighting and hitting his routine. So, you know, we just sort of helped each other and picked, you know, the, the next, next guy up and, you know, it was just, you know, sort of like feeding off each other. Yeah, I'm planning to be a part of this team and uh, it's looking good. Like you saw uh, today, it was, we're close to top 12. I think maybe we're even in top 12. So it's looking very good. We just have to work, keep working. It is a humbling sight in Flanders Fields, about a half hour down the road from Ghent. This is the Canadian War Cemetery at Adagem, and the Belgian people will never forget the efforts of so many boys, from the Royal Winnipeg Rifles, the North Shore Regiment of New Brunswick, the Algonquin Regiment, soldiers from across our country. Mid-September to mid-October 1944, 6,000 Canadian men were casualties of these fields. Their battle was known as Operation Switchback, and it was instrumental in the liberation of the Flemish people from the hands of the Germans. Their efforts are also commemorated at the Canada War Museum, which is not far from this place. Opened in 1995, it is a museum which has no funding from the state, no official recognition. Instead, it is the result of a pledge. The Canada War Museum was born because of a son's promise to a father on his deathbed that the Canadians who freed Belgians from Nazi domination would not be overlooked. Gilbert van Lanschut, the descendant of a prominent family, built this museum in an incredible 34 days. Its detailed and authentic dioramas depict the Canadian effort. Local families have donated treasures recovered from their backyards, reminders of the men who liberated their fathers and their mothers, uniforms, machinery, equipment, which has been cared for with reverence. It is a monument which aims to share, illustrate, and educate the much unsung Canadian influence in this part of the world. They are the heroes from far away who gave so much to the Belgians in a time of great need. They were the bright youth of another generation, and it wasn't all that long ago. Back then, the Canadian soldiers in these parts were known as the water rats. They lived in soggy trenches and in the mud, but they held their ground. Lest we forget, the Belgian people never will. Welcome back to Historic Ghent and our coverage of the World Gymnastics Championships on CBC. For Team Canada, a chance to take a tour. For many of them, this is a first experience on the international stage. And here, a chance to look at Gravestein Castle on the Lee Canal, the Castle of the Counts. For the Canadians, this has been a long road. Six weeks of training in Burlington, Ontario, and in the Netherlands. Of course, the goal is to qualify for the next Olympic Games in Greece. It is a long road. We're back at the Flanders Sports Arena getting set for the women's team final. We have to ask ourselves a question, Laurie, and that is, are we here for a coronation or a competition? Romania's won four consecutive world championships. They're the Olympic champions. Can anybody beat them? Well, this is a pivotal time for women's gymnastics. It's the start of a new Olympic cycle, and it's at these world championships where the new international order will be established. Let's take a look at the contenders. Romania, they're at the top, and they compete with consistency. The U.S. is inexperienced, but they're prepared to overachieve. Russia is injured, but Horkina is back, and that's a major plus. The biggest surprise, the Netherlands. They didn't qualify in Sydney, and this is their first appearance in the finals since the 70s. And 
important things to consider here, Scott, is that Romania is definitely the class of their field, but Russia is no longer their only threat. Things are changing in women's gymnastics. Things are changing for the Canadian women's gymnastics team. They had a breakthrough at the Sydney Olympics where they were ninth overall in the team competition, but five of those gymnasts have moved on. They have a young team. What can their expectations be here? Well, the good news about this team is that their one holdover from the Olympics was their top finisher, Kate Richardson. She placed 15th in the all-around. That's the highest Olympic finish for a Canadian. And what's even better is she hasn't reached her full potential. Canada has very realistic goals here. They know that they have three years before the Olympics. But their number one priority is to stay in the top 12 because they know that at the next World Championships in 2003, only 12 teams will qualify to the Olympics. So Canada's reputation is at stake. It is a young team. It is a big challenge. Let's see how the Canadian women's team fared in preliminary competition here at the Flanders Sports Arena. Canadians led by Kate Richardson and the rest of them fall in line as we said many of these gymnasts first experience at the World Championships. Canada begins on the vault with 17 year old Ashley Petka. And their strongest vaulter she'll do the Yurchenko one and a half just a side step deduction for direction on the landing but that was a great vault. And only one vault for the women in the team competition as they qualify. Three major changes on the vault. The most obvious the new vaulting table. They also have a mapped out landing zone. And now in the preliminaries, only one vault. Good score for Ashley Peckett of Mississauga, Ontario. 9-0-6-2. Here is Kate Richardson, Canada's top finisher at the last Olympic Games, where she was 15th all around. Clean vaulter. She'll do the pike half disciplined on that landing, trying to stick it, only a small deduction there. Canada started off very strong on the vault, impressive. Coached by David Kenwright and Heidi Coleman out of British Columbia, and she gets congratulations. Carol Angela Orchard, one of the team coaches, 9-1-3-7 for Kate Richardson. Canada moves on to the uneven bars. Crystal Gilmore, who was a strength at the Olympics for Canada. Unfortunately, Crystal has a very bad ankle. She has the torn cartilage that is floating around. It has hampered her ability to train before this event. See her struggling through this routine just a little bit, muscling some of the elements. Teammates yelling on the side for her to push. A little out of control here. And this is the tough part. This is where her lack of training will play a big role. Her stamina endurance is low. She has a big dismount planned. Can she pull it out? Oh, not enough gas, Scott. Well, and she's really disappointed. The 18-year-old from the Cambridge Kips. She really fought so hard through this entire routine. The long routine, packed with difficulty, but definitely a struggle right to the end. Emblematic of Canada's effort on the uneven bars. That score is quite low, 7.3 for Crystal Gilmore. Best bars routine belong to Amelie Plon, an 18-year-old from Joliet, Quebec. And Amelie is amazing on this event, but makes a mistake right here at the beginning. You can see the pain on her face as she did that mount. Distracted. Came back strong for that death. One of the biggest difficulty of the competition. She's not done yet. A one and a half pirouette into a ginger. Slight leg separation, but she's got some big difficulty in this routine. Tight struggle there, trying to squeeze tight to save that handstand. Just the dismount here. Double layout, a nice solid landing on a sore ankle. Except for that extra swing, a three-tenths deduction right there. She came back with a really strong and difficult routine. Trains at Gymnix in Montreal, national champion on the bars. An amazing skill there. We saw a rotation with a one-and-a-half twist. It's called a death. Very few in the world could beat that. 8-5-1-2 for Amelie Plant. Stutter step at the beginning of the routine, but she recovers. Canada now moves on to their third event after having a disappointing result on the uneven bars. The third event, the balance beam. Jennifer Simbudis of the Winstonettes. Always great potential for a mistake here. She's twisting, split jump. For 1.2 in bonus through connecting jumps and difficult elements and difficult.
appreciated for her to keep that old move alive. Elements named after the gymnast who originated them. That one named after Lori Strong Bauer. And she had a big finish here with a nice double back. Disciplined on the landing. You can see how much training has gone into this preparation of the Canadian team. Jennifer nice Simbudis, 8.287 for Canada on the balance beam as they make a recovery on that event. Now here is Joelle Wollett, 17 years old of Hamilton. A combination coming up, switch leap to a tuck pull, and she's off, puts her hands down, that's three-tenths deduction. But a tough fight, better than the five tenths for a fall. Handspring layout, two foot. I like Joelle, she's a thinker and she's tough. Hitch kick to a side, summy, very solid. for Joelle Ouellet of Canada. And so the final event for this team floor exercise, here is Ashley Peckett. Starting the routine off with a triple toe turn, fighting hard to keep stable. Looking for that one-tenth of bonus for the triple turn. Big opening pass, it's a full in, nice job. Ashley's from Mississauga Gymnastics, where there's a long tradition of excellence. She has great athletes to look up to, like national champion Stella Ume and Stacey Galloway. Coached there by Alex Bard. which is a raised surface. And for some of these uh, Canadian athletes, they don't have quite a lot of experience, and this may be their first time competing on a podium. That's a pretty big adjustment. Big time, last pass, run through a two-and-a-half punch front. And Ashley gets the job done. The middle pass here is two whips to a double pike. A whip back is a back handspring with no hands. It increases the difficulty of this pass. 8-9-6-2 for <laughs> Ashley Peckett of Canada. And a job well done here. Kate Richardson is the national floor champion, the leader of this team, the one they look to. See the two whips again, this time into an E-level skill, a double Arabian. She did step out of bounds there. You see the sideline judge raising the flag. One-tenth deduction. But she gained more than... 
than that in the difficulty of that path. Canada is known worldwide for its originality and wonderful choreography. This is a new routine for Kate. And I've heard raves about it from the judges and coaches here in Ghent. Canada was ninth at the Olympic Games, a breakthrough for them. They qualified for those Olympics at the last World Championships in Tianjin, China, where they were 10th. And a tremendous amount of preparation went into the team. Now, great turnover. Only Kate and Crystal Gilmore remain from the team that went to the Olympics. Andre Rognenko, who's the national head coach, and the rest of the coaching staff at all of the clubs have done a great job of preparing this team, but they also know it is a rebuilding time. They have three years to prepare for the next World Championships in 2003, where they must qualify to Athens. Last pass, double pike. Great job for Kate. And we'll also see Kate Richardson of British Columbia in the all-around competition here in Ghent. Take a look at that last pass again. This is always the most difficult one when it comes to endurance. The routine is a minute 30 long. For coach David Kenwright, also one of the Team Canada coaches here, 9.087. Well, Canada finishes well. In spite of many changes, they maintain a 10th place ranking in the world. It's a drop of a single spot from the Olympic Games in Sydney. But still, something has been accomplished here. I am pleasantly surprised in some ways that the kids did manage to compete as well as they did, considering the circumstances. Conditions here have not been as comfortable as we would have liked them to be, but I think, you know, to end on a positive note, all the kids have walked away healthy. Some did good performances. There's lots to take away that we can be... Uh, you know, positive about for the future. So I think the most important part of what we did today was having the Canadian coaches and athletes come together, a tremendous group of really dedicated individuals. So certainly David Kenwright and I were on the floor, but every single personal coach was working every single day with every kid in the gym, and the athletes responded to the entire coaching staff. So that was really positive for us because we had such a strong generation that has retired since Sydney. It took everybody to pull this group together, and they all worked together really smooth as if they'd been together for a long, long time. So that was a really encouraging sign for us for the future. When we return to the Flanders Sports Arena in Ghent, the women's team final with the Romanians looking to make it five in a row. Stay with us.